Hey friends, welcome to Tech Harvesting. In today's video, we're going to have a look at variables in Python. So in the previous video, we looked at how we can install Python and set up our environment and we wrote a single line of code. Today, we'll be writing more code, but this time we'll be looking at variables and the different data types. So we'll look at strings, numbers, booleans and more. So let's get started. Now, what really is a variable? Well, a variable is basically a piece of data stored on your computer's memory. So it can be anything. It can be a number, it can be your name, it can be a list of items, anything at all. Now, there are different types of data you can store. Just like how I mentioned, a number is a type, a string is a type. A string means, uh, we'll look into what strings are later on, but a string is basically a piece of text. And yeah, so in Python, the way we declare variables is like this. So here we give the name of a variable, we give an equal to sign, and then we give a value for it. So the variable name is basically what we use to refer to the variable. So we can get the value of the variable and we can also uh, make changes to the variable. And the value is what's stored in the computer's memory. So that we we'll, that's what uh, the data that's stored the memory is. So the name is basically kind of like an address you can use to get that piece of data stored on your computer's memory. You'll un if you didn't understand it yet, you'll understand it when we're going to go ahead and write down the code. Next, let's have a look at the data types. So there are many data types in Python, but these are the very basic ones. We'll also have a look at others like lists and tuples later on. Right now, just to get things clear, we'll have a look at the basic data types. So the first data type is the string. Now the string, as I told, is a piece of text. So it can be anything at all. It can be a name like this, or it can be, for example, a letter. So we can have letter equals E. Now, the main thing about string is that it should always be within quotes. So it can be either double quotes or single quotes. Now, there are also cases where you can use triple quotes, uh, but we'll look into that later on. So that's a string, and it's like how we looked in the previous slide stored in the memory so we give the name of the string here and in quotes we give the value now the next data type is the number now number is not really a data type there are two main types there's the integer and the float but for now i'm just going to refer them as numbers so uh, for the number uh, we can either make it an integer like this or we can either have it as a decimal number now the integer is called integer but the decimal number is called a float a float is basically a number with a decimal point. The next basic type we'll be having a look at is the boolean. Now boolean is basically a true or false value. So it can be anything at all. Right now here I'm giving a name of a variable as my boolean and I'm giving it as true. Now t should always be a capital so it's going to be either true or false. There's no other value for a boolean. Now, that's it for the explanation. I think it, the better way to understand this is by writing code. So let's jump on to VS Code and start coding. So let's start by creating a few variables. So first, let's go by data type. So first, let's do a string. And we can give a name, my string equals. So this is how we define a variable as I showed. So first you give the name of the variable, an equal to sign, and then you give the value. So there are a few things that you'll need to note about when naming a variable. First of all, it cannot start with a number. So you cannot have it like seven, my name or anything. You can end it with a number or you can have numbers in between, but you should not start with one. And also you cannot have spaces. So if you have a space here, you can see it shows up as an error. So you cannot have spaces if you want to name a variable then you can uh, or even if you have multiple words in your variable you can either put an underscore or you can uh, capitalize it like this this capitalization is called camel case and this is called snake case so in python you usually use snake case where you have the underscore between the words then you have an equal to sign and which is for assigning the value and then you have the value here so if I were to run this right now, it's not print anything new and it will stay the same as you can see. Now that's because we are not printing this variable. So let's print it out. So if we can use the print function we used in the previous video, which basically prints anything we give onto the display. And in here we can give my string. Make sure you don't have any quotes here because you don't need quotes for printing out a variable. 
So if we print here, as you can see, it's giving me the desired output. Now let's also look at comments. So comments are basically lines ignored by the compiler, by the interpreter. So if I have a hashtag symbol and give something after it, this will be ignored. If you do it like this without a hashtag, then this will become an error. And when you run it, you can see if you get this error. So we can have a hashtag here and specify anything we want. So just for our note, I'm gonna uh, separate everything by the types. So first we did string, and now let's do an integer. And I'm gonna name it my int equals, for example, seven. And I can print my int. So if I run this now, as you can see, it's giving seven. So next, let's have a look at floats. So floats are also fairly simple. My float, and it's basically decimal values. So you can have any anything at all. So here, for example, here I have forty five point five four five, and if I were to print it out, you can print it like that. And if you run it, you get the value. Now, one good thing about using editors like VS Code or PyCharm is that you get auto completion so right now you saw that as I typed I was getting completions like this so I can just click on it and uh, finish it off in case you're not able to see the auto completion you can just hit control space and it will show it to you next let's also have a look at booleans so for booleans you can just give another name and the value will always be either true or false it cannot be anything else boolean is always true or false you can find more use cases of booleans later on right now we can just use them as normal variables and we can print my bool so if we run this we can get you can see we get true now i just told you that these are booleans floats integers but then you can't see what actual type it is so if you want to see the actual type of a variable you can just pass it to the type function so for example i can print the type of my string so this type is a function just like print which will give the type of a variable we pass in so if you run this now as you can see we're getting class str and str stands for string now you can do this for all of the variables if you want to so if i were to give an int here float here and here I'll print the name of the boolean. One thing to always remember, you can name your variables whatever you want, it does not matter, you just have to follow the rules I told in the beginning. So if you run this, you can see we're getting int, float, and bool, which are the types of these variables. Now you can always change the uh, value of your variable. So right now here my string is Nasil, but then obviously you can change that. So throughout your code, you will be changing the values of variables and to change, it's pretty simple actually. You basically do the same thing. So you give my string and make sure it's the same name because you're changing the value of this variable. You're not creating a new variable with a different name. So you give my string equals and then for example, hello. Now if you were to run this, it should still print the first value you gave. Now that's because Python interprets line by line. So first executes this line, then goes here, 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 here. And when it reaches here, it sets the value as Nasil. And then when it goes to the next line, it will print it, but then it'll change. But once it's changing the value, we're not printing it again. So if we were to write the same code down here and uh, run it again, you can see we're getting hello. That's because the value of the variable has changed. So that was it for this video. We had a look at what variables are and the different data types. There are more data types. We'll look at them later on like lists and tuples. And in the next video, we'll have a look at different operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and more with these variables. And also look at how we can change the type of a variable from one type to another. So see you there.